Juggernaut! Today we are taking a look at a G.I. Joe classified action figure. We have Dreadnought Buster. He comes in the standard windowless G.I. Joe box. We have a good art here of the character on the side is number 106. From the back we can see what is inside which is included with the character. On the side another art. You can see here that he is 6.2 inches tall and here are the other accessories he comes with. Taking the figure out of the box I'm surprised to see that he has his own like box and he has this kind of locker which contains the weapons. I know G.I. Joe is not that type of an expensive like, action figure like Mesco but when they say that it's a premium uh, action figure it does make it feel like a premium action figure compared to Marvel Legends which comes with this candy bag, paper bag. Here we can see that this has some Cobra designs and you can't uh, the accessories won't fall because it's actually sealed so I needed to rip it off so that I can take out the accessories this is good because whenever I take out accessories from Marvel Legends like paper bag I worry that I might misplace stuff here we have the art and that's really cool that he comes with this so much like good packaging so here we have the weapons that we have, well silver like uh, paint here, very soft plastic, it, it's not like those uh, hard and brittle ones. Here we have a good detail in terms of the saw, you can see there's a different color on the chain and the actual saw but in terms of the handle it's all plain black plastic. Next we have the small gun, you can see here that there is actually a hole where you can peg in other accessories like a smoke effect which I will show later. Another accessory comes with is this, uh, this blade with a chain, it's not bendy wired so it would stay in its current position. Then we have his eyeglasses. Now sitting on the Payaso Diorama throne, here we have Buster. In terms of details, G.I. Joe does a great job. It feels like an MCU figure wherein there is a lot of uniquely sculpted details here. He has a tattoo on his left arm. You can see this watch over here so much detail to the bear I mean it's very small but yeah they, they added that detail there he has these tags on his pocket yeah it's a well detailed figure it's amazing how Jaijo this is does this and it's Hasbro I wonder why he can't do it for Marvel Legends in terms of the face sculpt it's not as like all the way photo real tech it's i feel like it's just the right amount of detail the eye still looks it doesn't look uh, as as detailed as the photo real of marvel legends in terms of his chest the weird part about the chest is the color of his chest doesn't match with his neck in terms of the chainsaw here you can see it looks great and on the side we have on his uh, legs we have a place where you can peg in the knife and on the other side you can peg in the gun very small so be careful that you might use it well detailed especially for the knee pads and the boots even to the that silver like buckle there for his boots even on the back I mean, you would never notice the back but 
they still added that detail. The only gripe that I really have is in terms of the chest. It, it does feel odd. In terms of the neck, he has a double dumbbell joint there which gives the head a great range of uh, movement like it gives him a little bit more of an attitude next we have is the other weapon you can the amazing thing is you can use either hands i notice with marvel legends the problem is either you get a gripping hand or a gun holding or a gun trigger hand but with this figure you can use both because it can also i mean the fingers will be separated that it allows you to hold the gun later on again this uh this accessories are very like bendable in the soft I mean they're not hard plastic it's very easy to to plug it in I'm just not used to like handling G.I. Joe figures which is really different from Marvel Legends it's, it's really strange to say that because they're from the same company how come they can't employ the same kind of like technique because this really works well, I mean, either hands can hold it. He doesn't come with any other uh, alternate hands, but this hands work fine. He can hold the gun here, as I mentioned a while ago. He can put the trigger finger inside the gun easily. He can use the other hand as well. Which is really, really uh, an upgrade compared to what we did with Marvel Legends, where only like a certain hand can do that. Using the accessory of the Phantom X from the Three Pack with Silahan Nimrod, we have the smoke effect. And next, we have the blast effect here. It works fine. Next, we have from Slide Effects. From the muscle and ricochet pack, we have here one of them that you can plug in. Next, we have is the knife. No problems holding the knife, considering these hands are supposed to be trigger, like trigger finger hands. I don't know. It's just how the material that they used for the hands and the weapons it works well. Now switching over some heads using the Marvel Legends head please it doesn't really work unfortunately but because the peg hole is too big for Marvel Legends for some I mean most figures from Marvel Legends will have big peg holes it just won't work with this one it's very loose next we have this bone breaker another guy with shades and can it is very loose it, it just sits on there and you can know, easily knock it off trying this particular head on the bone breaker body it won't work it, it, it I mean, you can make it rest there but it won't stay in place it's gonna it, it, if you knock it over it would easily fall maybe use blue tack so it won't fall here we have him on the bone breaker body the reason i got this figure is to make him stand with the reverse here we have the fast vendor head it won't Take in. Same is true for the new Chapman head Wolverine. It just won't peg in. It's just gonna sit there. And that's what it looks like with the new Chapman. Next we have is the Chris Evans Captain America head. It does look great on this particular body. 
the flesh tone is just okay. Next we have the James McAvoy head on this body. Feels like a, a wrestler. In terms of height, he is indeed 16.2 centimeters. For some Marvel Legends size comparison, we have him besides Wolverine from X-Men 97 and Cyclops. Next we have Jubilee and Outback Road. Other members of the Outback team, we have Longshot and Dazzler. Next, with some Reavers, we have Bonebreaker and Skullbuster. Next, we have him besides Reese and the Punisher. Reese is on the Gung Ho body, and here is Gung Ho. For some 7 inch scale figures, we have the Marvel Select Juggernaut and Colossus. In terms of articulation, his head has a great range of movement. His arms can extend that far. He has a butterfly joint well hidden there. He has a bicep swivel, double jointed pinless elbows, swivel here. He can actually hinge forward and back. It's just a bit difficult right now. Probably I need to heat it up. He can punch forward with great range and well done in terms of the, uh, the green part. He can't crunch that much like Spider-Man <laughs> He has an upper tie swivel somewhere here, hidden behind this particular uh, weapon holder. He has double jointed knees with pins. I don't mind it because the same color. He has a cap swivel and his he can hinge forward and back. My final thoughts. This is a cool action figure. Immediately this figure is sold out in Amazon. In our shop, we have some stock of him available for purchase. It's really a interesting figure because you can use him as a civilian with your other Marvel Legends figures. Overall, a good figure with excellent accessories. The only problem I have is his shades keeps him falling off and the skin tone of his chest does not match with the head and the rest of the body. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, subscribe, comment, and ring the notification bell.